The last of the control structure families is the repetition. We have already looked at sequence and selection. And finally, we get to the iterative structures that enable us to create code that can repeat itself either X number of times or can repeat itself based upon the condition of an expression. And you see in the flowchart example here, uh, we have a very basic loop construct. Uh, the expression is what is going to control the looping. If the expression evaluates to true, then the statement or group of statements is going to be processed. If, on the other hand, that statement evaluates out to false, then it's going to fall through to the next line in the, in the code. Now, there are three kinds of loops that we want to look at. The first, the simplest, I think, is the while loop. Now, the while loop says while this expression is true, that thing in the diamond there, while that expression is true, go ahead and continue to execute the statements. So the statement or statements would get processed. The loop then comes around and evaluates that expression again. If the condition is still true, then it will execute the statements again. If the statement evaluates, I'm sorry, if the expression evaluates to false, well, then it'll fall through to the code that follows. You see uh, in the example here, we have a very simple while loop set up. We create a variable called i and initialize that variable to zero. We then enter the while loop construct. And that means that everything in between the curly braces, right below uh, the while and just below i equals i plus 5, everything within those curly braces is going to form the statements that are processed within the loop. So while i is less than or equal to 20, so the first time we enter this loop, i is going to equal 0, so that will evaluate to true. We drop down, we will see out i onto the display, and then i is going to equal i plus 5, 0 plus 5, 5. So we come back in, now i equals uh, 5, that is less than or equal to 20, print 5 to the screen, 5 equals, or I'm sorry, i equals 5 plus 5, so it equals 10, and on and on and on. So it's going to print uh, 5, 10, 15, and then 20 because it says less than or equal to 20. On the last go round, I will then accumulate up to 25. It will come back up to the while loop. I will not be less than or equal to 20. And so everything between the curly braces will be uh, skipped. It will jump down to the C out uh, end line. Uh, statement. And so the while loop is going to continue evaluate or continue to process so long as that expression evaluates to true. As soon as that expression evaluates to false, which may be the first time into the loop or it may be the hundredth time into the loop, either one, uh, it will skip over everything between the curly brackets and drop down to the very next line and continue processing as expected. There are a number of ways that we can control the while loop. We just saw a counter controlled loop. Uh, we can also create a sentinel, that is a specific value that the program looks for. We can check flags, a, a true or false, or use a Boolean variable. If this is true, continue. If this suddenly becomes false, uh, move on out. Or we can look at the state of something. This is mainly a file handling command, so if not end of file, continue reading the contents of the file. So let's look at some code examples. Again, a simple counter controlled loop. We saw an example of that. Putting the curly brackets is crucial. If you leave the curly brackets off, then only the very first line or the first statement that follows the while um, statement or the while keyword is going to be considered to be a part of the loop. And so what you might see is that uh, whatever that statement is, let's say it's the see out statement that we were just looking at, 
So while count is less than or equal to 20, if there's no curly bracket, then it will print this out, uh, print out uh, C out count, let's say, and go back up to the while loop. Count will still be zero because it never gets to the never gets to the incrementing statement uh, a couple of lines below there where it says count plus plus. That creates an infinite loop, and that'll go on until you press Control C and stop the processing. So it's important to surround all the statements uh, with those curly brackets, even if there's just one statement. Use curly brackets because it'll get you into the practice and you won't have to worry about it later when you have more than one statement. So we have counter controlled loop. Here we have a sentinel value. We are reading a series of menu choices, none of which we're interested in unless the user hits quit or Q. As soon as the Q is pressed, we want to fall out of this menu. So this will be a menuing command that you use uh, quite often. And finally, we use a flag in this example. We set found to false. Uh, we go in and perform some, uh, looks like, searching functions here. And if name equals Elijah, we set the flag to true. Uh, otherwise, the flag remains false because it, it doesn't get changed except if this condition exists. So if name equals Elijah, we set the flag to true. And then it is found. Uh, so this, we're, we see a, a negated statement here, while the bang followed by found. So while not found, um, it continues to process only when Elijah is true, uh, the statement is false. I, I'm sorry, the statement is true. And then we exit uh, out from there. So I, I'll show you an example of the state flag when we get to the code examples. So that's the while loop. That's the very simplest loop that you will probably first encounter. There is an alternate form called do while. And if you look at the flowchart example, we see that it turns things upside down. You see that the statement or group of statements is executed and then the control expression is evaluated. What this does is everything uh, in the statement slash statements is processed at least one time. And we are guaranteed that it'll process at least a single time. And then the, um, the expression, the control expression, will evaluate if it's true, it will go back up and process the statement or group of statements again, uh, and then come back down and uh, evaluate the expression. If it becomes false, it will not loop one more time. It will simply fall out of the loop construct. So this is a very useful statement if you want to ensure that the test will be done at least once or uh, multiple times. A good example of this is in a menuing situation where you give your user, let's say, five options, A, A, B, C, D, E, A, B, C, D, E, you have five options, <laughs> and uh, you want to control their input to only those five options. So you will lock them into the menu by putting the menu in a do while. So you present the menu output to the user, ask them to pick, they click on X, and because it is not A, B, C, or D, or E, uh, it skips back up to the top uh, and f causes it to, to run again. So you actually would write that as a negation, uh, but you lock the user into the, into the loop. If you did this as a while loop, then the danger would be that they never enter that loop because, because they put incorrect input in in the first place. So by turning this upside down, we guarantee that the code will be executed at least one time. In the code example that we see, we're, we're going to look at a range of uh, low to high uh, pressures. So we force it in. The user must give us the first pressure. It evaluates it must be greater than the low and less than the high as long as it is. Give me another pressure. Give me another pressure. Give me another. As soon as the pressure falls outside of one of the two boundaries, then uh, bam, we drop, we drop out of there.
The last loop construct that C++ supports is the for loop. Now this is uh, a little bit, actually this is a lot of it different because this is a counter controlled loop only. And it is a self-contained counter controlled loop. In the while loop, you could create a counter controlled loop and well, actually even in the do while, um, but you had to create a separate variable. You had to increment or decrement that variable, and then you had to test it in the expression. The for loop is self-contained. It places all of these elements within the statement. And you see that the initial condition is set and it evaluates uh, to the looping condition, true or false, is it, is it equal, less than, however it's gonna go. And then it processes the statement. The counting, uh, the counting mechanism is going to be automatically updated. And then as it's updated, uh, the loop condition evaluates it again, processes the statement, updates it, evaluates the statement. When it, the evaluation becomes false, then control passes to the statements that follow this construct. You see the, the layout of the for loop. We have an initial statement, a semicolon, a loop condition, a semicolon, and then the updating process. So we say that uh, we have a variable called x in this case, and you can declare this variable right inside the for loop, you can say for integer x equals zero. So that creates the variable and you set the, you initialize the first value of x and we set it to zero here. Now it evaluates against the loop condition. Does x, uh, is x less than 10? In this case it is. Now the x plus plus is not processed yet. We go in and we would see out x, that's the only statement here. Then it comes back up and the incrementor uh, adds one to x. So it's now x, uh, one is less than 10, uh, two is less than 10, three is less, and so on until uh, 10 is reached. When 10 is not less than 10, the C out statement will not be processed and execution will be passed down to the last, uh, down to the remaining statements. So three loop constructs, really simple, uh, but very powerful. The while loop, the do while loop, which is always executed at least one time, and the for loop, which is uniquely counter controlled. So as we go uh, forward here, we're gonna go look at some code now and see how this stuff actually works. So here we see a very simple example of the use of a for loop. In fact, we're gonna nest two for loops together to create a matrix of numbers. Our first for loop is controlled by the integer variable i. So we initialize it to one and the initial test is going to be is i less than or equal to five, uh, and then it will increment the i at the end there. Our nested for loop here, i is going to use the integer variable j, and we set j to equal i, then we will test to see if uh, j is less than or equal i plus four, j plus plus, blah, 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 blah. What it's gonna do is print out a, a matrix of interesting sequences of numbers. So let's run it and then we'll come back and, and walk through it with the debugger. So that's what it produces, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five down the side, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, six, seven, four, five, six, seven, eight, and, um, Nothing really useful, not like a times table or anything, but uh, it's a good example. Now let's put a uh, let's put a breakpoint here, and we'll execute this, and we can step through it. All right, so our variables are not initialized, and so we see that they've got garbage in them. But we'll take a step forward, and now we see that i is equal to one. So we step through, and we'll ignore these other statements for now. Now, you notice that the inside loop is getting trapped. 
Okay, so I plus four, one plus four is five. So we're going to execute so long as j is less than or equal to five. And we see it's changed to five right here. And so we're going to watch it skip out. So you see that it jumped over, went from there, skipped over the curly braces and came to rest down here. That'll put the uh, new line command in there. And this is gonna jump down. Now, notice that i has not been incremented. So as we come back up and go to process, we see that it equals two now. So is i less than five? Yes, it'll less than or equal to five. We come back in, j is gonna get set to two to start the line. So we see two, j is equal to two, and then so on and so on and so on. So the for loop is very powerful. It becomes even more powerful when you nest the two of them together because then you can work uh, in the two dimensions of the x and y axis on, on problems. So let's take a look at a, a while example and uh, get a better look at how that operates. Now this example shows us how the while loop functions. And uh, in this case, I wanted to give you an example that wasn't in the little code snippets that we saw in the slides. This one looks at the state of the end of file marker. So this is going to read a file. We have our while command right here. So while not end of file, from the file that we're going to read. So it's going to come up, open this file. Um, looks like something out of the Book of Revelation. It's gonna come back in here. It's gonna read character by character and then print that data out to the screen. So only when it reaches the end of the file will this evaluate to be false. So it reads a character, comes back and checks it. Reads a character, come back and check, come back and check it. So we'll, we'll execute it. Yep, just as we expected. Read the file and printed it out. Okay, so let's, uh, let's put a breakpoint in here and step through here and see what we can learn. Now we see that it's going to read each character. So in file it gets the first character and it's done it and the first character is an I. It is not an end of file character. So we see out, read the next character. The next character is a space. And so on, and so on. So you see that as long as that remains true, as long as the while uh, condition remains true, it's going to process all of the lines between the two curly braces. When it finally ends, uh, becomes false, it'll drop through, close the file, do our system wait thing, and that's that. So the while loop, just as simple as the for loop, uh, maybe even less complicated. So good luck on, uh, on your work. Um, try to use all three of the loop constructs and get a little practice with each one, especially understanding the difference between the while loop and the do while loop. Good luck, we'll see you next time.